Hey, it's another edition of Joe's Record Store in the walk-in closet of rock. And, uh, I got a treat for you. Well, uh, these uh, next couple videos I'm going to do, the main theme is going to be uh, U.S. death metal. For, um, especially U.S.-based death metal bands. And, uh, it seems like pretty much Europe is pretty much... In, over in Europe, they mastered the craft of black metal, fantasy metal, folk metal, beer drinking metal. Um, but in the U.S., I think uh, this side of the ocean, even though I have a bad habit of bad mouthing the U.S. American scene, especially mainstream, um, the United States has always had a strong underground as far as hard and heavy music goes. And even during the 90s, when metal was the bad word of the industry, there was still some great metal going on. And uh, this is one of them, Crimson Thorn. Um, if, uh, if say, you're of the Christian persuasion, you're in, really into death metal, you definitely know about this band. Um, probably one of, the, one of the best in the underground scene. Um, and a funny story about this album, Unearth, there's been like three different versions released throughout the 90s. Um, originally in, I believe, 94, 95. Um, yeah, I believe in 94. Let me even go back further in the 90s. In the early 90s, uh, they started out more as a straight-up thrash metal band. I mean, definitely, definitely intense for for uh you know the last glory days of thrash i mean they were a heavy band for the beginning and then they uh, deliberately went into the death metal direction since you know death metal was really happening and this was the kind of band that it really worked for them uh and uh this is their two they have another album out that they don't have yet but i believe yeah i believe they got another one out that they put out that so far only have these two CDs and uh, and uh, let me tell you about Unearthed. Uh, this is the uh, Morphine Records version. It was released by a Burrito of uh, Grace for the Fallen, uh, 44 Ever Given. He also did Eight Ball Cholos and uh, 97. And uh, probably what's uh, different about this besides the cover and the aesthetic is. Um, it had bonus tracks from an old underground demo tape that they had floating around that you could buy from the band at shows or mail order. I bought a lot of cassettes mail order like that growing up. And uh, and this is from their early days, from Prophet of Death, these last six tracks. And and they're more, they're more thrash metal because that's how they started out, just a really extreme, intense thrash metal band. And... Uh, but uh, they're definitely brutal songs nonetheless. And then Unearthed was their first uh, proper full album. On um, it was just straight up brutal death metal, intense vocals, and also what's your um. Then this is one of the full f uh, one of the death metal bands that doesn't use effects. I mean, you find it hard to believe it. That's the guy's real voice. And, in, and a lot of death metal bands are known for cheating and using effects so they don't strain their throat. But um, these, this, these guys didn't. And Unearth, it was originally an independent, you know, independent release. They financed it themselves. They released it themselves. And it was picked up by Row Productions and Underground Christian Music Catalogs. So the original independent release of that album had a totally different cover. It had like the more blues and reds colored, if I remember correctly, and uh, I mean it did pretty well by itself. I mean among the the uh, death metal fans and the Christian scene going on, uh, Row Productions distributed it, and, and uh, a couple other underground distros. It, it sold like hotcakes, and, uh, and then later uh, Rex Records, before they went under, uh, Rex Records released unearthed on their label you know a little more prestige uh, different cover again I, I actually have the cassette ver uh, I have the cassette of this album which is the Rex record version and uh, which I'll show later because I keep saying over and over the cassettes are put away it's a uh, this is definitely a good representation of, of the best of brutal music 
going on in, in that point in time. And here you have it. Unearthed Morphine Records. I don't think this label exists anymore, but I mean as far as like underground extreme music, this they were they definitely put out like really high quality products. There's no There's an ad for HM formerly called Heaven's Metal and um Yeah. But this is brutal stuff. You know, this is uh if you want lethal music. And uh, this is one their one they put out later. It's dissection. And this is ultra brutal. Better quality production than this one and uh definitely uh better songwriting even though this is a good album i mean this one showed how how they gotten better as musicians and as a band and i mean it is brutal from start to finish there's even a couple there's one track where it's almost like they're uh, experimenting with black metal a little bit um like i ask because just all in all Thick riffage, low tune guitars, and uh, I don't think Scott Burns and Morris Sound Studios because it could have produced a better album than this. And uh, all right, and that's enough for uh, you know one of the best bands in the you know U.S. scene. I'm not sure if this band is still active. So, I mean, any of you other righteous metalheads over there, you know, out there in YouTube land and cyberspace. You know, give me a heads up. But I'm just a fan that's pulling his stuff out and, you know, yapping for the camera. Rock on, stay metal, and check out some good, brutal music. Thank you for watching.